Okay, in CS60, we've learned about inheritance. That's where something is a something else, like a dog is an animal. But even just the idea of having instance variables, this idea of containment is super helpful. So that's where something has a, like a person maybe has a string which represents their name. In containment, that actually is the most powerful tool we've learned. And the applicability of inheritance is actually less broad than the applicability of containment. Okay, so we have these two important designs. So containment, again, is using existing classes as data members, or in Java, those are instance variables. And then inheritance, we're extending classes that are already written. So containment is great where we've got some library class that does what we want. And inheritance gives us similar things. And the unique thing about inheritance is that we can override some of the existing methods. And in that way, that library class or the thing that we're inheriting can end up calling our new code. So here we have old code calling new code. Here's an example of how old code can call new code. So imagine a year ago, I wrote the animal class that's on the top left, and it has two methods, the live method and the say hello method. Now today I wrote the dog class on the bottom right that extends animal, and it has its own say hello method. Now in the main method, on line six, you can see I make a new dog object. Then I say d.live. Since that's called on a dog object, I look in the dog class for a live method. I don't find it there. So I look in the parent class. So that's on line three. And in the parent class, that calls this.say hello. But remember, this is actually a dog object. So it'll look for the say hello method in the dog class and end up printing out woof. So there you can see that code that could have been written a long time ago ended up calling my code. So the has a contains or wraps, it allows code reuse, and it allows new code to call old code. And then inheritance on the right, that's the is a relationship. And we're able to extend the capabilities and specialize capabilities. And again, like we just saw, allows old code to call new code. Okay, since we're gonna be working with a larger code base, we're gonna look at this tool called UML or Unifer unified modeling language. And this helps us abstract from our code to see the relationship between our objects. And there's lots of different variants of the UML. And we want to be able to focus on drawing a is a relationship, a has one relationship, and, has a, and a has many relationship. That's the important stuff for us. Okay, so this is going to rely on some of our knowledge of inheritance, object-oriented programming in general. So I've got a class pet owner that extends person. So that means that a pet owner is a person. Any functionality that a person has, a pet owner will also have. And then a pet owner, in addition to having any of the instance variables that a person has, also has a dog object. Okay, so you can see these things represented below. A pet owner is a person and a pet owner has a dog. As an aside, it's a little bit absurd that the only pet that you can have is a dog, but ignore that. We're just trying to focus on the UML. Okay, so I have code on the bottom right-hand side, and I want you to try the, to draw the UML like we saw in the previous slide, and you're going to label your arrows with things like is a, has one, or has many. So you should pause it here, and I'll keep going. Okay, so we had public class student extends person. So that means that student is a person. Then we had a student instance variable named dorm room. So a student has one dorm room. They also had a bicycle bike. So they have, it has one bicycle. And then a student can only have a single friend. Uh, so they also has one person, which is their friend instance variable. So I want you to imagine you're working with a really big code base. You can imagine that this type of UML diagram to see the big picture of the code could actually be super helpful.